Hey y'all. Welcome. I'm having some keep I'm having some uh technical difficulties on my end. <laughs> That's what you get for buying new stuff and not trying it out before the podcast. What well, hell? Hell. Even that uh I couldn't hear anything once like my audio started messing, so I couldn't hear nothing on my end. But welcome to the show, everybody. Hey. It's uh same cast, different day podcast, and y'all Tina got me working during a uh a Packers game. That's you right now. Said you wanted the podcast to be on Thursdays. Don't be blaming that on me. Well, I wasn't expecting for them to play today. It's a Thursday. It's always football on a Thursday. I didn't know that the Packers. I don't care about the other team. I only care about the Packers. I didn't know that the Packers were playing today. I thought it was on Sunday. Hell. Oh my God. Womp womp. But anyway. Welcome to the show. Um, if you are not aware, uh, the government is prepared to shut down as of October 1st. And if you don't know what that means, is anything that's basically paid for through the government, those days will not be paid. Uh, the America bills will not get paid, uh, which means now we're with this happening. If you guys don't know, a few months ago, uh, there are three like world like credits, like it's like a world credit system. And a few months ago, they actually lowered America's credit score on the amount of money they can borrow. And because of the near government shutdowns, which is another one about to happen again, which means now America's going to be able to borrow less money, and which means that can cause for, and, they're, and, how are, how are, and the question is how are America's going to make up for that money? So for those of you who are buying houses right now, that's how they're going to make up for that money. With interest rates from home loans, credit and credit cards, and um, car payments, ba- basically banks are going to raise interest rates to try to make up for that money that the country is going to be losing during this government shutdown, due to government shutdown, and due to the credit of America dropping. And you wonder why does America need to buy credit, borrow, you know, money, even though we like have our money is very worth the most. And we probably have the most money that's not in the third world country. Well, the simple fact is we're just stupid. And we don't want to use our own money to pay for stuff. So we use other countries' money, like how Ukraine is using our money to fund their own war. But yet at the same time, we have our own citizens living on the street, dying of hunger, and not getting being able to get a proper education or health care because we are funding a country that's uh, a war fund a whole nother country. Uh, oh, I already know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's been a day, okay? It's been a day. My technology wasn't working, so I gotta have a drink to that. So yeah, and then there are there's also talks of the people who get like social security benefits. So there's talks of oh, that's so nice. Oh, I'm sorry, I got distracted. I'm watching the Packers game at the same time. Um, so there are talks of people who get uh get social security that they're going to get partial uh payments, so whatever they're uh normally whatever it is that they get a month, they're talking about splitting it and splitting it in half. So I don't know what the point of splitting it in half, you know. And they had months to prepare for this, they knew that this was coming, and yet this is the Republicans dragging their feet because basically they're like, basically. The Republican Party is holding America hostage right now just on a simple fact that, that they can't, we will, if you guys want a, a spending budget, basically, you guys need to pass these laws that we want passed. And if you're not going to pass these laws, then we're not going to uh, approve your spending budget because, like, so uh, is it the Senate? Or what's before the Senate? No, so the House already passed their part to, uh, to keep America going and keep the spending going. And it has to go to the Senate. It has to get approved to the Senate. The Senate is a majority, majority Republican. The House is majority Democrat. So it all got passed to the House. It's supposed to go to the Senate. The yeah. Senate is rejecting it. And it was like, basically, no, we're not We're not going to approve this until we get our demands, basically. So basically, a lot of people like uh, any government job. So if you work for a postal service, um, the court, anywhere, anywhere in the courthouse, uh, anybody that's in the Army, they're not going to get paid during this government shutdown. So you saying they got to tomorrow to figure this out? Because I know they don't work on the weekends. Unless they hold a call for like emergency session or whatever, they will go in on Saturday. 
But yeah, they basically have to have this settled by tomorrow in order to avoid a government shutdown. Woo, child. Which means that this does affect, you know, uh, assistance, public assistance also. It affects everything. So I'm thinking like in terms of my job, the majority of the patients that come there have government insurance, Medicaid, mm-hmm. Medicare, you know, so. It, so I, I think mean, when it comes insurance- to like maybe health, well, maybe with health insurance, maybe they're going to use some of their money that's in reserve to keep like the country going for like health insurance wise. But uh, well, there's stuff I outside of that. I don't know. a certain amount of days to file an insurance, like a health insurance claim. Um, and then I yeah. also know with Medicaid, I don't know how Medicare go. I think they can backdate at least about three months or so, maybe a year. I'm not sure, but I know it can be paid in the long run. But with that being said, that don't stop. Like who who finna pay the water bill, light bill, salaries? You know what I'm saying? Like that's where that money kind of stems from. That's where the revenue mm-hmm. comes from. So yeah, this is exactly. This is really sticking into my stomach because I don't. You know, I'm not really sure what it is that the Republicans want. Um, I know we talked about it in previous podcasts where a lot of their demands were very silly mm-hmm. in our eyes um, and some of their opinions and thoughts, like just listening to the um, just listening to the people who are trying to run for office for president. Like it just it's it's stupid. So now if it shut down. Then it's going to turn around to these people are expected to go to work still. Without mm-hmm. getting paid. You know, you can't really like how you going to shut off all the people that have work to the age they were supposed to work. And then tell them they don't have any social security. Like we're already aware that we're going to have to work to like 70 to get social security. But for the people who have already earned it, like this is a bunch of bullshit. That it is. This that's the Republican Party for you. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. This is this is why I always stress about how important it is to go vote, people. That's true. Tori and cut that out. My baby can be happy. Shut up. Well, yeah, so make sure y'all keep an eye out. Motherfucker. Hey, um, hey, hey, hey. I can't do the game. Oh, it's a touchdown, Detroit. Mm. Already. Um, you remember how that game went on Sunday? It's all right. Right. It's okay. It's all right. It's still good. It's still good. Um, yeah. So make sure y'all be aware. You know, and I actually saw uh, a video online where they were talking about over over the course since COVID. You know, Another thing that keeps our country going is how much money that Americans have in the bank account, like us accumulated as a country having a bank account. And I think before COVID, there was like all together, there was like a billion and some dollars all together with everybody's accumulated bank accounts uh, savings, basically. Uh, since 2020, that has literally dropped. Like we're there, like I think it's like a million dollars a year it's been dropping a million or two million. It might even be more than that, but I know it's down to like a couple of hundred, it's a couple, a hundred or something million, over a couple hundred million, I should say that, uh, that, that now that's now in American savings. So Americans are using more of their savings. So it's like, okay, now once, you know, majority of America blow through their savings because, you know, there has not been uh, a cost of a, a, a living adjustment for since inflation. It's really gone up. Uh, the price of used cars up. The price of food is up. Like everything is more and more expensive, and yet we've seen these. You no know, corporate America, they're making you know record breaking profits right now, and yet the people who are under that is the ones that are struggling and not you know is trying to penny pinch it to try to get through. So when so when so basically if we keep going in the direction that we're in, the American economy is going to collapse. 
and, and and it's up to our current government to try to figure it out. And this is the thing that, this, and this is one thing that I keep stressing. We need somebody who either is part of the Gen X generation or the millennials. I don't think millennials are old enough. We're almost old enough. But really, it needs to be people from like that Gen X generation who really need to step up and start campaigning for president. So I want to be president. Like it needs to be somebody who was born at least after 1970 or 75 to start to be in charge and start making decisions for this country. A lot of like over a lot of the people who are sitting in office right now in the Senate and Congress. And then our current, our last few presidents, they were all born in the 30s and 40s. They have no reality with how today, how it is to live in today's society. They don't have no reality of today's issues. Like they think they do. They try to preach that they do. But considering that people who baby boomers appear to be the only generation who's really going out to go vote until I got to give it to them, that Gen Z generation stepped up with this whole fuck around and find out movement and and been starting to get some of these older politicians out of office before not doing their jobs. And that's what needs to happen. We need to get people, if you're born in the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, 50s, and the 60s, it's it's time. We need to stop voting for these people. Mm -hmm. When it comes to president, it's time to stop because we will continue to live and continue to live and be in a situation that we're in right now. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, um. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> well, okay, let me finish. We will continue to be in, that si- in this situation and the way our economy is, the, the way how global warming has been attacked, the way how everything is. We're going to continue to be in this situation until we get, you know, somebody, people of uh, at, least, at least Gen X or older. Um, and more of those into the state and uh i mean into the senate and into the house and uh and uh president i was i got thrown off because there was <laughs> i'm watching the packers game you know how if you go to lambo like here we were the cheese heads right uh-huh. this lady had a bedazzled cheese grater on her head supporting <laughs> the, the lion so they had threw me off like what the fuck <laughs> Well, yeah, that's 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 everything you need to know so far about the government shutdown. Whew, that's stressful. Very. Um, I don't remember what the next topic is. The missing minority. Um. Oh, right, missing kids, missing yeah. missing uh children. That's all. Instagram. Let me find that. Can you go ahead and explain why I try to find it now? You go on, go on and explain. Okay, so I found this story um, about it is placed in Cleveland. Um, y'all gotta excuse me. I don't know the difference between which size of Cleveland. Um, there are. Give me that. So basically, the story is saying that there has been a found serious it. surge of children going missing within when i was reading the article within the last two months it's been about 45 kids that have went missing um they didn't really go into specifics of age ethnicity um areas where they were missing or sex or gender i should say um but it's kind of you know when I was reading it, it says it's been over um, a thousand children um, reported missing from Cleveland since the beginning of this year. Now, I was discussing this with somebody at work today, and it brought up some really good um, points. So I did a capstone in my undergrad degree about human trafficking, right? I think I kind of told you, you know, like that's why the FBI built um, a building in Milwaukee because there was an influx of sex trafficking going on in Milwaukee County, but the prime area of interest was Brookfield, believe it or not. Okay. Now, human trafficking can come many different ways. You know, there's sex trafficking, then it's just human trafficking in general when they make them do labor, right? 
So mm -hmm. it's really hard to kind of figure out like what is causing this influx. Then it's a lot of are they missing because somebody took them or are they missing because they just want to leave home? Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to consider that. Um, then, like I said, there's also situations of, um, you know, kind of where in the area, the ethnicity, so on and so forth. Um, I guess I would like to kind of keep an eye on this. Because it's kind of disheartening, right? I have kids, and that's my biggest thing. Um, a lot of people I know, I go out above and and out of my way to take my kids to and from places because this is what I'm scared of. I'm scared of them being snatched up. Even though I have all boys, it don't matter, right? I'm scared of them getting snatched up. I'm scared of them getting killed. I'm scared of them being robbed. So I try to do what I can do to get them to and from where they want to go safely. Um, I really, you know, I've always heard within that first 48 hours after a child is missing, that's kind of the most critical time to try to find them or recover them. And I know we've all seen on Facebook when somebody posts, you know, little such and such went missing after school. They had this and that on so on and so forth. I've seen a lot of um, good endings to those posts where they have been located, they have been found. I feel like our most popular um, missing child case in our community is Alexis Patterson. Uh -huh. You know, um, she went missing, it gotta be over 20 years ago now, right? It um, was 2001, I was in the fourth grade when she went missing. Oh, you was in the fourth grade. I was graduating high school. So there's that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of heartbreaking because, you know, we she was never found. A body was never recovered. Nothing like that. So it kind of leads you to think like kind of like what happened to her. You know, I don't wish that mm -hmm. upon any parent, no matter how good of a parent you are, how bad of a parent. If you took the time to report that child missing, they mean something to you, you know? Um, and I feel like a lot of people can should kind of take that opportunity to kind of sit their kids down, you know, talk to them, educate them, go over stranger danger. I don't care how old your kids are, you know, just being aware of your surroundings and, pe and you know, my dad always said you have to watch the watcher. Pay attention who's mm -hmm. looking at you. You know, if you got a pattern of doing things, switch your pattern up. Don't walk down the same street to get to a certain um, place all the time. Don't, you know, because people pay attention to your patterns all the time. And I really hope they locate some of these missing kids. You know, I hope wherever these kids are, they're still alive and they're safe for within the cir circumstances that they are in. And I just feel like you got to be a very sick individual to want to snatch a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, another big story when I was younger was uh, they eventually found him at McGovern Park with the, the Contravious something. The two, and the two boys, they found him in, in yeah. the tree. Yeah, that was sad. That, that, that was, I remember them going missing. They, I mean, I remember walking around schools. So at the time, I was in middle school when that happened. Yep. And I remember walking around school and every classroom that day, like them boys' pictures was placid in every single last classroom that I walked in. And it's so crazy because they went missing and it's like everybody was looking for them and they was like right there. You know what I'm saying? And then it was like they both drowned. And like, I don't I said, know. I'm they, like, how did they, because I don't, how did they drown? Like, so, and then that's my thing. Like, they for both of them drown? So that's so weird to me, right? Because why wouldn't you check there first? Like, had you checked it and then you didn't see it and then you went back to recheck it? Like, what was, and you know, we were both young when that happened. So we weren't thinking like, okay, and then what? Nope, that don't sound right. You know, even at my young age, it just didn't sound right because everybody was looking for them. And then I was like, they've been right there the whole time. So I always felt right. like somebody had came and put their bodies there because they were being looked for 
so much. That was my thought in my head at that time. But that's one of the reasons besides the many, many shootings that go, go on in McGub. I don't allow, I, you can't go there. No, no. My kids used to get mad at me. Oh, they, they playing basketball in McGub. I don't care. So what? No, no, no. It's not going to happen. I, I think no. I've only been to McGovern Park once in my whole life. And like, I don't ever th I don't think I've been to McGovern as an adult. I have because I went with my kids, but every time I went up there, it's always something. It was always something. You know, it was just it's just like a bad space. And that's sad because of the location. It should be a good thing. And it's a beautiful place, you know. It's great. And mm -hmm. that's one thing I have to say about Wisconsin. Like we have beautiful, beautiful um our environment is beautiful. The trees, the grass, the flowers, the wildlife. You know, we have a lot of that. And it was supposed to be a good space, a good free space for people to go. And it's like the adults just took over. So the kids really didn't have anywhere to kind of go. And that that's really shady and it's it makes me really upset because these grown men up there pretty much hogging the basketball courts. And I mean, that's great. They can go up there too, but still be like, okay, you know, if you see a group of younger men that want to play, you can't be on there all day. Be like, all right, come on. We're going to let y'all come in and play. Teach them, coach them, you know what I'm saying? Get better at their game. And that's what I didn't like where I used to live at. I used to live right behind Wall Park and my kids will always want to go to Wall Park to play basketball. It was literally going through my backyard, hopping the creek and you were in the park. And it was so scary to me because it was always somebody up there getting shot and killed about basketball. And then they decided they wanted to do this whole grand um, they had this grand idea where they turned the name of the park from Wall Park to Harriet Tubman Park. I don't know what the purpose of that. Yeah. You didn't know that? No. Yeah. So it's it's, it's actually Harriet Tubman Park now. Um, shit. And they did and they did that while I was living there. It but ain't, It ain't no underground railroads there. Why would they do that? Because they was trying to appeal to the community. They just named the park after her. She needed, she deserves more than a park. Okay. I mean, to be honest, Walker Hampton, like, come with on this now. younger generation, that they really don't even teach black history no more. Let's get that. Oh, um, they try, they don't even really teach black history. And they act like they still cheat teaching, but they don't. I don't think a lot of, I if you go and ask, you know, a, a 10 year old right now about the Underground Railroad, they probably won't have a clue about what you're talking about. No, they're not going to know. I feel like that's something, if they teach it, they leave it for high school. You know, when we were younger. But when I was but when I, when I was in elementary school, we learned about the Underground about Railroad. They, they talked about it. Yeah. They talked about like, how she helped the, slaves, helped the slaves go through these tunnels and, and help them get the to Quakers, the north and become they, free. You know, the white people that they named, you know, they were yeah. Quakers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. God damn it. And I mean, I feel like just the whole black history thing uh, and it's, it's being rewritten. Trying to fire, it's starting to fade away a little bit because I noticed like everybody black history month programs be like the last day of February. Yeah, and then they rewriting black history to make it seem like slavery and everything that happened wasn't oh so bad. Like, wasn't like, like, like it wasn't that bad. Like, once again, like you still hear, you still hear like a white person say, "Oh, go back to your country." Like, first of all, we I didn't ask to be here. First your of all, your ancestors, your ancestors went and took us from our countries, captured us, chained us up, put us on a ship, barely fed, barely fed them, and then on top of that, you know, y'all when 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 one of them died, y'all just threw them over into the ocean. Then These whoever survived were when they got over they were here, literally, they were literally being shackled, shackled on the boat, and then they basically made to sit there and piss and shit until they arrived in America weeks later, where they were auctioned off to the highest bidder and made to work the rest of their life until they died. Life. Until they died. Until and this went on what for four hundred years? Four hundred years. 
Four, four that's a long, that years. is a long time for a people uh, to be enslaved. African Americans was well, we was the longest. I think so. To be enslaved, yes. To for us in this country, yes. For us to be considered free and and I mean, and then after that, it's like you had the whole civil rights movement because so, nobody nobody agreed with black people being free or even having the same um being able to do the same as the rest of the city well white so, people I should say. So 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 to think about it. So just just to think about. So were you trying to say that black people were enslaved longer than the modern world of today? Now they keep telling us to get over it, but slavery what? happened longer than the modern than the modern world outside of slavery. We we've been we we were enslaved longer than we've been free. Four centuries. That's a long time. Four centuries. So just so for y'all, y'all go back and let's just think about that. Black people have been enslaved longer than we have been freed in this country. Indeed. Just think, Indeed. just think about it. It's only been what? It's only been what a hundred years since slavery. And then, I, you know, and then when did the civil rights movement happen in the sixties? That wasn't yeah. too long ago. We still had exactly. to fight for rights, like the fucking right to like vote. Come on now. Come on so now. This is ridiculous. Using the what, same bathroom, drinking, you know, eating from the same restaurant, drinking from the same fucking bubbler. You have to sit in the back of the bus. You got to give up your seat to a white person. You know, you say you got the white, you got the white and colored uh, uh, drinking things. Uh, so you, like you said, separate bathrooms. Well, even when they went to work, they had to go in through the back doors when they went to work. Even when they went to go, if they didn't even if they wasn't at work and they wanted to go just watch a movie, go to the theater and watch a movie, they had to go in through the back door. We are a very resilient people. And then remember how they tried to say and switch it around in the history books, like, oh, okay, four hundred years of slavery, then it happened, but we gave you. We taught you things that made your race survive, basically, is what I heard in my head. Oh, don't think about slavery as a bad thing because they acquired skills to survive. Like, we okay. didn't have fucking skills before right, where, we was at. where we was at. But the thing is, though, by the time slavery in it, the world had changed. Once again, universities was established. There were schools. There were all these type of things. There were eventually things that would you have to go into school and learn these trades in order to um in order to you know to get good jobs and stuff like that. For the so modern it's, world, it's a, but it's we're hard. for the modern world. So we were we wasn't taught anything for the modern world. It was nothing prepared or set up for us in the modern world in order to be successful and thrive as a race and that's why like reading. look at it it's been generation and generation and generation and generation of poverty within black communities that's why look at how long they kept us illiterate right because if you can read you can learn mm -hmm. that's just like i know we're getting a little bit off topic but that's just like uh back in the day in the 50s and 60s i believe it was 50 40s 50s and 60s Anybody can go to school for free. School was free. If you want to go to if you wanted to go to college, it it was free. That's and then I believe I don't know which president, I believe whatever president they got voted in right after believe, right after um JFK was killed and his vice president took over. So it took over after that, after the vice president was out of office. Um, I believe in 1970, 71, they would have got elected. Whoever that president was decided that you know after Johnson, I can't remember which one. Yeah, yeah. Whoever took over for whoever took over presidency after uh Jeff K was killed after him. Johnson, John, okay. So Andy Banks Johnson was the vice president when. Okay, right. So mm -hmm. after him, that's when it was a started where you know universities can charge tuition and all this. 
it might have been Nixon where they could charge tuition and all these other kind of stuff. And you know, that's when then that's when people started going into debt with and trying to take student loans out. That's when all that stuff was started. Like you literally university was free until like nineteen seventy, I believe. And then here we Nixon. go. This, it was Nixon. It was Nixon. Of course. It was See? Nixon. And so he came in and established this whole system that we know of today. This broken edu higher education system was started with Nixon. Can you imagine how many people would be successful right now if higher education was free? Shit, Nixon did a lot of fucked up things. Wait, wasn't Nixon or was that for, for, uh, for with the water with tap, the wire tapping? Who was the wire tap? Oh, no. Uh, you talking about the Watergate? Well, yeah. Uh, let me see. So they probably don't teach this stuff in the schools. Oh, it pisses me off now. I'm pissed off. Yep. Yep, it was Nixon. See? He did a lot of fucked up shit. And that's what made him he, resign. He was he probably wanted to introduce uh crack into the uh the black communities. He was the first president to resign. And his wife was the one with the wasn't his wife the one that started the dare campaign or no, don't do drugs or whatever she used to say. I have no idea. I think it was her. Whoever, uh, whoever started the dare campaign, they let they have let that tiger down. <laughs> All these kids are drugs now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let me see. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the next thing uh, queued up, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm okay. I found it. Oh no, it started in the '80s, which makes sense as to oh Reagan. It was Reagan. Oh, wow. it was Nancy. Oh, okay. Williams. See, that means that doesn't mean they're under Nixon. He's he he won't brought crack into the uh. America. You, we it's all know community. they put crack on the streets and then they tried to turn it around like they didn't and start a program because it was getting out of control. Mm -hmm. Thinking they sleep. But on, on the topic of racism, let's talk about black face. Ooh. So if you guys don't know, back in the day, white actors, they did they wouldn't they wouldn't hire black actors or actresses to you know play you know, the parts of black characters. So these white actors and actresses will put on makeup to make themselves look black and to play these roles. And then they will always put on this black makeup and have these orange lips and have and be over the top and stuff like have many reasons that wasn't really black people, but to them that's just how they saw us and how they portrayed us. Almost made us look like like we were clowns. So um there's a Polish karaoke game show that, that went viral uh, and they're, they're uh, sparking some backlash behind it because they had one of the uh, people on there contestants imitate Kendrick Lamar. And so, it wasn't just, so it wasn't just Kendrick Lamar. It was other, it was other it people was, they had on there. It was Drake and Kanye West I saw. Yep, so they said there's been uh the uh they had people on the show on the show performance, Snoop Dogg, Michael Jackson, Bob Marley, Tina Turner, Kanye West, and even Beyonce in full blackface. So this is the young man right there in the middle. That's really how he this, this that's him. So and then there's um that's him part of I can't play the audio because you know Yeah, and, and he was up there, you know, rapping the song or whatever, but you know, I mean Kendrick Lamar is a black man, so he was using he was saying nigga and this individual was saying nigga as well. That too. So, so that's, that's him going that's through the process. Him. Yeah. Oh my God. Hands bright as day. But they even painted his hands. I see. To make him look black. And then uh, there this goes is the when, yep. I mean, can we really say blackface with Drake? I guess so. So, first of all, Drake ain't that dark. 
<laughs> he's not. That's why I was like, can we say do like like does that even make sense? Or so, like Drake but, is not even in dark. And he's but Canadian. You how ignorant people are because Drake is just as light as they are. He's right. mixed. Uh here's Kanye no West. West. That is terrible. Dude. Kanye West probably don't care about something like that, but he doesn't. He doesn't. I at feel all. like I feel like Kendrick Lamar, absolutely, because of what he stands for for the black community and what he is rapping about. You know what I'm saying? For you to do something like that, that just turns my stomach. Now, I don't know if you could pull this up or get a clip or a picture real quick. It It is a movie called Tropic Thunder. Oh, Robert Downey Jr. No, I'm I've, talking never, about. I've never seen it. Oh my God. Okay. So okay. I was told by one of my co workers today, I was like, no, I haven't seen that before. So she pulled it up for me and she showed me clips of the movie. So basically, the movie to me in my head is kind of like a satire, but it was Robert Downey Jr. was Australian in the movie, but he was an Australian actor that got cast to play a black man because they didn't have any black people to cast for the part. And he was in full black face, was language, you know, um, then kind of talking about yams and greens and kind of all those stero stereotypical things. And I was like, I cannot. <laughs> I did not to be know. honest, this was the only one that the black community approved of. <laughs> so, it, and I was watch, so I was watching it, and because they they put another actor in there that was actually black, right? So, like I said, to me, it was more of a comedy, it seemed like. And I haven't watched the whole thing. I just watched clips. But it was one clip where um, the young black man told him, you are Australian. Act Australian. You know what I'm saying? So every time he would spit out these, you know, try to speak a certain way, it's even a clip where I think dude slapped him and he was finna punch him and Robert Downey Jr. Gra grabbed him and brought him in for like an embrace. It was like 400 years. I'm like, bro, what? Like, what are we doing right now? What you mean 400 years, Robert Downey Jr.? Like, hold on. <laughs> I said, I was never aware of any such movie. I, <laughs> I'm like, this is wild. What you want? You want this? You got one down there. Here. So, yeah. So, that's another, you know what I'm saying? And just the stereotypical things. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while, but I found. So, like I said, this is the only, the only time where black people was like, because he played it so well. And to be honest, he this did is one of those. Job. It was fun. And he did it. He did a really good job, and I feel, and I feel like he actually looked like a real black man. A black man. He did. He did. It so wasn't compared to we look, when we see like other people do it, and it doesn't look like a real black man. They look like clowns, especially back in the day, because like yeah, they made us look like clowns. Yes. Oh my goodness! Like I, when I saw that, I was like, "What? I've never seen this before. <laughs> I had never seen that before. I was just like, this is wild. Like, ooh." <laughs> what a time! What a time! <laughs> what a time to be alive! So yeah, I, I was just so surprised by that too. So before we get too far, do we want to uh, get into the video clip that you sent me, mm -hmm. or do you want to uh, do you want to explain it and then I play the video clip, or how you want to do it? I don't forget what the video clip was going to be about. Wisconsin oh, the hair, and the hair. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Wait, so, the hair. The hair. Oh, I was talking about fetuses, but okay, we can we can do the hair. Okay, I got to so, put the hair. So I I told you 
black face than hair. Okay, so while he's trying to get his life together, let me kind of give you some backstory on this. Now, I don't remember all the specifics as far as names, um, but it was a young um, African-American male. I got it right here. Okay. He, okay, so there we go. 17, so his name is Daryl George. Um, he was attending a high school, right? Um, got suspended because of his hair. Now, you know, recently they passed a whole Crowns Act where you, your hair shouldn't matter, like jobs, schools, et cetera, et cetera, it's right? Called, it's called the Clown Act. I said I mean, Crown, Crown Act. Act. Yeah, I mean, that's what yeah, I mean. yeah, Crown Act. Okay. So it makes sense, right? Because we consider our hair our crown. So, so. He got suspended, and the first thing I thought about was the Crown Act, right? But then I looked a little bit deeper into it. It looks like they are was trying to uphold his suspension, talking about they're not saying they got a problem with him having locks. It was because his hair was past a certain length on his head. So I guess the rule is for males there, it can't go past the ear, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I get it. So then just he need to put his hair up. But then as you see in this picture, he has, it looks like he has barrel rolls to me and anybody that has locks, okay, their crown, understand what barrel rolls are. And clearly in this picture, his hair is not touching his ears. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now they have filed a civil rights um, suit. And I feel like, yes, they should. Because no, ain't nobody finna cut their hair. Like, you're not gonna force me to cut my hair. Like, I can understand military for safety reasons, right? That's the whole uh -huh. thing. So it's males and females. You can't have your hair touch your collar. That's just what it is for females. Men have to have their hair cut low. You know what you're getting into when you go to the military. That's just what it is. You also have to pass a variety of, of like fitness tests to be able to be able to get into the military as far as being physically fit you have to be a certain age right things like that so when i heard this i was like okay yeah this is disgusting so it's like now it kind of reminded me of you know the emancipation proclamation and we were set free but we weren't really free so it's like they put this um, they put the Crown Act out saying, hey, you guys can't discriminate because of hair anymore. And they're still trying to find loopholes. Right. So now I get it when like me as a nurse, because everybody here is supposed to be up and out the way. Right. For mm -hmm. medical reasons, like you can't be doing this and your hair. Uh, I'm starting to IV. I can't see and I stick them somewhere else or. I'm cleaning a wound or something like that. And my, you know, that's why they say no lashes, no nails, bacteria, you know, things like that. I get it. It makes sense. But that goes for everybody in that profession. This right here, he still was adhering to the rules of the school by keeping his hair above his ears. And they still find a problem for it. So I hope they get sued, 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 and they change the name to the school to the, his name. It needs to be Daryl George University High School. And that's what I say. And then teach some real black history in that mug. Right. So um, being first of locks, with locks, right? How do you feel about that? First of all, I'm not cutting my hair. I don't care about what y'all talking about. Second of all, I, this is fucking high school. Why does it matter if my hair is hanging below my ear? I'm not, like you said, I'm not cleaning no wounds. I'm not cooking no food. I, I, I'm not, I'm not dealing with anything that's going to require me, my, that's going to make my hair contaminate something. Why do you care about my hair hanging low? Yeah. It should not matter. It's and fucking then, high school. And then again, it's not even hanging low, as you can see in this picture. Well, yeah, right. It's not even hanging low. So, like, what, and then what's you the suspend deal? him over that. 
So, like you suspended him. You didn't like, did you pull him in first and say, hey? And now you know, I'm missing out on education. I'm probably gonna miss out on class assignments. You could be causing my grades to drop. I might have had a high GPA, and now I feel like you're trying to lower my GPA be because I'm a black kid excelling in the school, and you're trying to lower my GPA and get me suspended. All because some preconceived notion that you have about locks. And his locks look neat. Mm-hmm. That's just wild, mm -hmm. man. You know? That's some bullshit. Absolutely. Uh, if y'all live, if, we're, if anybody who live in this city or state or near that schoolhouse, I need y'all to go protest outside that schoolhouse. I want to see y'all picket signs. I want to see every damn thing. I want to see all natural hair out there. Right. That too. Bring it out. Bring it out. You know? So yeah, that's, I, I, I hope this young man get everything that's coming to him. And Kudos to the mom. I see the mom in the picture. Kudos to the parents and everybody that's behind him on this. Mm -hmm. And kudos to um, Instagram shedding spotlight on this because I feel like this is what I want to see more of. Just kind of like these little small injustices that people kind of be like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Yes, it matters a lot, right? Because mm -hmm. me, I've had my locks 11 years now. Okay. It's been times where I have cut my hair, you know, because I want to. But, honey, listen, if I go somewhere and they tell me I can't have my locks, I remember when, I started, working, I remember when I started working at where you still work at, and they hired me with my locks, and my locks were purple, right? Never said anything to me about, oh, well, we want we want to hire you. Then I come to work and then it's like, oh, your hair can't be purple. And then it wasn't even a bright purple. It was a very subtle, subtle purple. See, oh, you they wait the until they wait until after you're hired. They wait till you go through orientation and they, all the other kind of stuff. They wait till you go through this whole process and then as soon as you start working, like actually working, working, like, oh, you can't have that. You can't have this. Like, what? You had to cover your tattoos. I'm like, yes. And I used to wear, you remember, I used to wear turtlenecks. Mm -hmm. every, every day I was at work, I wore, and it used to be hot. I wore a turtleneck underneath my scrub top because of my tattoos. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, it's so condescending when you see other people, the doctors, doctors, doctors respiratory therapists, therapists nurses. Got uh, tattoos here and tattoos down in here. Not nothing is covered up. Nothing is covered up. So I was just like, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel like because, the because of the department that we worked in, in was yeah, majority majority blacks. African American. Yeah, that's why they yeah. tried to enforce that. Yep, yep. And then when I asked questions, I was told that that um. That corporation has a blanket general set of rules, but then allows each department to uh, compose their own rules for the department. And I was like, yeah, you on a bunch of bullshit. OK, uh -huh. but then I was even more disgusted because it's like you waited until you hired me and I needed a job at that time. Right. And it's like, uh -huh. do you understand? I don't think you understand the process of coloring locks, like how expensive it is in the wear and tear on my hair. Cause it's not like I'm brushing the dead hair out of my, um, off my head. It's not like I am cutting the dead ends off of my hair. Like my hair was just my hair, you know, and it was freshly done. So it's like, okay, I can't go get it re colored right now because it was just done and you're going to cause me to go bald. Mm -hmm. so, so I had I had my purple hair for a little bit of time and then I think I ended up going, I had to bleach that color out of my hair. And then I put like a chestnut brown over it. So that's when you met me, my, my hair was like a brown color. Because when I when I dye my hair, I dye my hair from the scalp. So my whole head was purple. 
and you knew that because you hired me. All it, right. was a nice, it was a nice, subtle, deep purple. What's this? Oh, we're going to move on to this. I, I was getting it set up. Okay. So why is he trying to get it set up? Um, everybody remember what Roe v. Wade was, right? That was the president for making abortions legal, right? Um, mm -hmm. then recently it was overturned, stating that abortions weren't legal based on some old ass 1800 ass law that somebody didn't have nothing else to do, but they went back and found that and wanted to stir the pot. So that ended up with abortions in a lot of states being found unjust and illegal. Our state being one of them, which is Wisconsin. So recently, earlier this month, there was a judge in Dane County who ruled on that um, overturned Roe v. Wade and said Roe v. Wade um, that said the law back in the 1800s was for um, feticide, okay? So feticide was, is defined as when somebody gets hurt to the extreme of causing them to lose their child, right? So an unwanted abortion because of physical harm is what a feticide is. And that's what that law was pertaining to and not consensual abortion, meaning the mother wanted to have an abortion. So they overturned it or earlier this month in Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin. Um, I feel like this is a very invaluable resource in our community. No matter what it is that you feel about abortions, they offer so many other services. Okay. Um, they hopped right on it. As soon as they heard it, they made a post on Facebook and was like, guess what? We're going to start abortions back in Wisconsin. So they had three locations where they did abortions at one was um, the water street was the water street location in Milwaukee, then it was one in Madison, and then it's an additional one in Sheboygan. So the one in Sheboygan hasn't started back up due to staffing issues, but the one in Milwaukee and the one in Madison have resumed abortions. So what kind of abortions? You got your medical or I call them chemical abortions where you, um, so the process is you have to be confirmed pregnant, so like through ultrasound. And for a medical or chemical abortion, you have to be dated at 11 weeks or less, right? So that's, you know, usually women find out about six weeks on average that they're pregnant. Um, and what happens is you go in, you have to take two different, you have to take two pills. Um, and you have to see a doctor twice. You also have to do, go through counseling, okay, with every abortion. Then you have the mechanical abortions, which were legal up to 22 weeks, okay? So after you hit that 11-week mark, anything above 11 weeks, you would have to get a chemical abortion because the um, abortion pill wasn't going to work for you anymore. And that's when... You come in, you know, they do an assessment. They make sure they confirm you're pregnant. You have to go see the doctor twice. You see the same doctor twice. And then you go through the procedure and you also have to do counseling as well. Okay. Now, there used to be several other places that offered abortion besides Planned Parenthood. One of them was on the east side on Farwell. And I was reading into that and it looks like they kind of went under when the whole, when they, um, back in 2022, when the whole law was passed, because they didn't offer anything outside of abortion services, right? Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means that they no longer have to cross over to Illinois, right? Um, which I feel like is best. I mean, it's, I never understood why that law was passed for 
a few reasons or why Roe v. Wade was overturned for a few reasons. Number one, people already complain about how overpopulated the United States is, right? Uh -huh. Number two, you have things like incest, rape, so on and so forth, you know, or, you know, okay, no, I don't want to keep a baby that came from a rape. You should have that option. Number three, you know, you have many contraceptive um, choices. You have oral contraceptives, you have implants, you have condoms, you have the morning after pill. Every, nothing's 100%. Nothing. Okay. So if you've done all of that, you know, you, you, your last abortion is, I mean, your last choice is abortion. Even if you haven't done any of that, you should still have the right to choose, say, hey, you know, I'm not um, financially stable. I'm not, you know, mature wise. I'm not ready for a kid. This isn't really what I want. You know, things like that. You should have the choice. I already feel like that's a very, very tough choice to have. I don't know. You know, I don't know if anybody who decided that Roe v. Wade should be overturned, have they ever personally experienced an abortion or been with somebody that had an abortion? It was I, an old white man who didn't have nothing else to do, who, who believed that if you had sex with your first cousin, that you should be, you should get an abortion. You should, you should keep the baby, or your first, or your first cousin got raped, or you got raped by your daddy, or something like that. Up oh, now, I'm pregnant. You should have to keep that baby. Oh, even though my my baby's gonna have all these health issues, I want to terminate the pregnancy. I don't have the right to do that. I still have to carry this baby to full term. You know, I'm no. You want me to bring this baby into this world? Who's gonna have all these issues? And I can't afford to take care of the baby, nor do I have the time. And okay? which it was a study that was done that shown like they was and they were so worried about that they some people well it was a study that was shown, but there was also this one thing where somebody was talking about like the reason why uh the, these older white men want abortions to be uh to to not be a thing is because for one it was mostly uh uh women who were who were basically having full-blooded Caucasian babies that were terminating their pregnancy. It was more white women going to go terminate their pregnancies than it was actually African-Americans going to go terminate their pregnancies. Because we couldn't because, afford the shit. Because, Number because one. That, and on top of that, they're scared because they're, they're scared that the, the white race is dying because there's a lot of mixed babies out here. Everybody just basically screwing everybody. And they feel like that their, their genes or what the right race is dying. So, well, hey, we're going to end abortion so that way y'all can't get rid of the baby to keep our... To the Your fault. You shouldn't have bought us over here. But anyway, so um, I am pro-choice. I always will be pro-choice. Um, moment of, of transparency. I've never had an abortion myself. Um... I've went to support friends that have, and like I said, it's already a very difficult choice to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, hold on, baby, mommy talking. Wait, here. It's already a difficult choice to begin with, you know, and I feel like, you don't take somebody's choice away, right? God gave us free will, which is the right to choose. Whoa. So who are you, man, to decide that we don't have the right to choose? And then right. coming from, you know, this is my body, okay? And I know it's the whole politics of well, the father didn't want the mother to have an abortion, but she decided to do it anyway, right? So where are the father's rights in that X, Y, and Z? That's a whole other thing. body. He don't have a choice. It's not your body, okay? So it's like, what if, you know, you find out I'm pregnant, I'm just going to tell you the baby not yours. So then what you going to do? What you going to do? So now mm -hmm. 
Because you know what? I was drunk. I got drunk. I was caught up in a moment. Uh, you, I could tell you're not going to be a good father. You're not going to be supportive. Uh, I don't want to have this baby by you. You know, is it? Yes. So I feel like it's the woman's body. It's her choice. Okay? Yeah, because at the end of the like day, it, the man doesn't have to give up his career. He doesn't have to take the time off. It's a lot of stuff that he men don't have to do when it comes to pregnancy. They don't have to deal with not sleeping. They don't have to deal with you no know, a lot of the complications that go on during their pregnancy. Hell, I can die giving birth to a baby that I don't even want that you want. There you go. There you go. So go ahead and play that clip. Oh shit. You supposed to be um, ready. I gave you more than enough time. More well, than I had I ain't, I ain't had a the share thing on. <laughs> Abortion is health care. People of Wisconsin have been without this essential and necessary care for over a year due to a ruling by the US Supreme Court, which overturned Roe v. Wade. When Roe was overturned, Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin made the agonizing decision to suspend abortion services in order to protect the physicians and staff who care for patients and communities, to protect those providers from the threat of being prosecuted under an archaic Wisconsin law criminalizing abortion care. The uncertainty about the enforceability of Wisconsin's 1849 abortion law has been devastating for Wisconsin women and people across the gender spectrum who need abortion care. Since the US Supreme Court decision, Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin has maintained there were two paths that would allow PPWI to resume providing abortion services, a legislative path and a legal path. A ruling by the Dane County Circuit Court in July made it clear that the 1849 law is not enforceable for voluntary abortions. This Monday, September 18th, Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin will resume abortion care at our Water Street Health Center in Milwaukee and in Madison at our Madison East Health Center. In consultation with attorneys, physicians, partners, and stakeholders, Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin is confident in our decision to resume abortion care in Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done and continue to do to protect access to abortion, essential health care. Thank you for working tirelessly to right this course of history in Wisconsin. Because of your continued support and because together we never give up. Because of that, Planned Parenthood Wisconsin is again able to provide the full scope of sexual and reproductive health care, including abortion, to anyone in Wisconsin who needs it, no matter what. Thank you. That was well said. She sounded like she was about to cry at the beginning, you know, but I feel like that was well said. I tried to get a preceptorship at Planned Parenthood so, so bad, only because they do such a good job of being very transparent, being um, very non-judgmental for reproductive health. Like once you hit 12 and instead of Wisconsin, you can walk up in that mug without your parent and get birth control, get condoms, get STD testing, you know, all of that stuff. You can also, they also offer because you probably don't have insurance. You know, Wisconsin offers insurance for just reproductive care. All you got to do is sign up for it. I've never known for somebody to get um, denied. You know what I'm saying? And then the state of Wisconsin pays for your reproductive care. That, I feel like that is one of the best things. Seeing as though how high of an incidence of what I've been seeing syphilis, HIV, you know, gonorrhea, chlamydia, tr trichomonas, those are things you can get rid of, but syphilis and HIV, you cannot. And I've also been seeing something trending to me, a lot of people that we have treated are coming in just getting the wet burns. Oh, I'm, I'm worried about wet burns, but they never go get their blood testing done about what kills. Okay? So... Mm -hmm. I feel like I really wish there were more locations when I was younger. There were many more locations for Planned Parenthood. I would absolutely, absolutely love to even do moonlighting there. 
you know, just to provide the education because I feel like there is none. Like I, when I was in school, we had health education, sex education, where my parents had to sign and said that I could get taught this stuff in school. I don't remember having to sign anything about sex education for neither one of my kids. One is 19, the other one is 15. So I took it upon myself. Come look at this. You see this? You can't get rid of that. Yep, we got free condoms at work. Here you go. You need to learn how to use that, you know, because it comes down to a lot of things. Sex isn't just about having babies. <laughs> You can get a lot of stuff, a lot of serious things for um, a few minutes of pleasure. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's segue into our next topic. I know we're a little bit over time, so we're going to um, go ahead and knock this out. Now, speaking of sex, another taboo topic, I don't know about any other culture, but within the black culture, men frown down on women with high ba body counts, right? Now, mm -hmm. there have, I don't know what this threshold is, um, but Shannon Sharp had a interview with um, an Instagram fitness model, Brittany Rimmer, right? And they were talking about a lot of different things, but one of the things he didn't specifically outright ask her, but she volunteered the information because he was kind of beating around the bush. Like, you know, Hey, this is my, you know, this belongs to me and I unwrap this. Now, if somebody else is unwrapping it or has unwrapped it in the past, it makes it less desirable. So mm -hmm. she went for the she went for the shits and she bl blankly told this man that she slept with she, her body count is thirty five. So now, in my experience, a body count, okay, whatever a woman body count is, the people that she want to remember that she gonna add to that count, okay. So mm -hmm. it probably is higher than that, you know. But I went to look to see how old she was. She's 31 years old. She doesn't have any children. She out here doing her thing. You know, body look great. She got her own fitness stuff. She making her money. My thing is, I don't care how many people she sleep with. That has nothing to do with any of us. You know, she's not somewhere being a deadbeat mother. You know, even if she decided she wanted 10 kids, like, what's the singer that has all them kids? Kiki Wyatt. Oh, yeah. And she's been married multiple times. So does it make okay? Does it make it okay? Because she had all her kids while she was married. That does it make it you get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. does it make it okay? Because if she she's been married with three times, at least that I know of. I have no idea. And she got her kids are in the double digits. Okay. If you can take care of how many other how many kids you want to have, that's your business. Okay? It doesn't affect me. I don't care. Back in the day, they had a lot of kids. That was the thing. Big families were a thing. You know what I'm saying? Because there was no abortion, birth control. You know, if you're Catholic, you don't believe in birth control. So it was all of these factors coming into reproductive matters. Now, I can say whatever a person's body count is, is none of your business. What I'm worried more of is, are you clean? I don't care what you was doing before me, especially in my big age of 40. I expect for you to have about a body count. Hell, practice make perfect. Okay? So I feel like at 40 years old, if you don't know how to please me, mmm, mmm, you know, so I feel like it's null and void, but I, for the life of me, I don't understand why that's a turn off to men. And what if she just said that just to see what his reaction was? 
What if she truly hasn't been with 35 people? What if she told you it, she had been with four people in her life and it has been 50 and you don't know the difference? Because how are you going to be able to tell the difference? And they go to the gynecologist with them, or I don't know. So, so the only thing, right, that alters a woman's vaginal open because it's not even a whole vagina, right? Is if she gives vaginal birth. So the vaginal open opening will be wider, but the actual vagina is not. It goes back to its normal size. And that's after giving vaginal birth. So you can be with somebody that had 10 C-sections and it's going to be like, she's, she's never given vaginal birth. She could have been with 60, 70, man. You would never know. So that's what people need to understand. These, these folklore legends or whatever the people get into their head or, you know, I get it. You know, the whole, oh, the father is going to wed the daughter while she's a virgin with these, um, with these um, pre-set up marriage. We are in 2023, okay? Because if she would have asked him what his body count was, and if it was higher than hers, then what? You're a less desirable man because they're, you slept with. They're they're celebrated when it comes to men. You see what I'm saying? I don't care how many people you slept you, with. You, I just know you, if you clean. slept with you slept with 100 women. Oh, you you you, you know you the man. Mm -mm. Nope. That's how that is. I never asked about body counts because I don't care. I don't care. How do you feel about that? Oh, I, I don't How feel. do you feel about so let me ask you, how do you feel about a woman that has slept with a lot of men? And I say whether it's a man or a woman, you vote for you a hoe. So to me. Well, if you're getting paid, remember, maybe I shouldn't say it's a whole thing. You got it. If you doing, if you I'm sorry, if you got a high body count and you broke, you a hoe. No, you 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 not a hoe because if you was a hoe, you got a high body count, you'd be paid. But what is a high body count? I don't know because I don't be sleeping around. That's nasty. I don't do that kind of stuff. That's nasty. I am a virgin. Boy, bye. But that's my thing. Like, what the fuck is a high body count? And then it <laughs> you clutching your pearls. Yes. <laughs> but then it goes back to how old that woman is because how many people do you think she's supposed to sleep with within her lifetime? One person? Maybe two? So, so you expect to find it, a woman. It, it, so I'm like, if you're in your 20s, I'm just saying, if you're in your 20s, say like 21, 22, and you come to me and say that you slept with over 100 men, I'm looking at you like, you nasty motherfucker. So that sounds like porn stars to me, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now when it comes, okay, so I feel like that's my cutoff point with body count. If you come to me and tell me you want to be a porn star, or you have been a porn star, then I'm automatically not interested in you because I feel like, how are you going to commit to just me? It's not going to be capable, right? Because you have these tendencies, you're hypersexual. So that's what you get pleasure out of so much so that you made it your job. And it's fast and easy money. Like, what? You gonna pay me a thousand dollars to come in here and sit and to play with myself? I ain't gotta have sex this time. Just play with myself? For it, what? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. But to me, it's not easy because it's a lot of re like what porn star you know has retired and has a regular fucking job? Or uh, um, what's his name? Ah, he was just, uh, cash didn't cash something. So you got one person. Uh, Johnny Rapid now does construction. 
Okay, so he doesn't really j- deal with the general public. Um, there's these two two guys who are in a they are in a relationship with each other, and they do porn, and they both well, currently work full, and they also work full time in a hospital. Okay, so but they're together as a couple, so it's just couples porn, right? Not necessarily all the time. Okay, so my thing is like. What if they get out? I mean, it ain't nothing they can really do about it because they can't discriminate somebody. You can't fire me because I did porn in my lifetime. I think I feel like only people who get fired from doing porn in a previous whatever teachers. is people who are teachers or people who are uh, considered in corporate America are only ones who are who are in that type of way. But you know, a lot of these people at the end of the day when they get done doing porn, like like. There are some of them like they're they like it's some of them like they did porn and they did they made enough money for porn where they went and they bought them you know bought them a nice lavish house like okay I got I made enough money to be comfortable and now I can just go work a regular job and maintain myself and that's what a lot of them do I find so I find a lot of the younger ones actually turning it into something else I should say like porn like so like. Uh, the guy from his name is Dan Daniel Benson. Dan Benson. So I he don't want to know why you know all these porn star names. He was on Disney Channel. The one I'm talking about now. He was on Disney Channel. Um, he That's now has OnlyFans. He does OnlyFans now because, uh, you know, it, after if you're not one of those people who are like really really big on Disney, like yeah, I was the actor on Disney, but I wasn't big on Disney. So like once that show or they time is up playing those kid roles, like I look too old now to do kid roles. Their careers just kind of it just go wow. it just vanish. So he started doing porn, and so like he either films himself doing solo stuff, or he films himself doing stuff for like uh trend trend. Oh, I don't see. I don't want to. The the people who look like women but ain't got Trans- the breasts and everything. Trans- okay, there we go. And they still got the penis. So he does stuff with them, and um, like he will sell like autographed nude pictures of himself and all this other kind of thing. So and he okay. actually turned this into like an actual business. And then like some of these people, like yeah, I do porn, but then it's like once I actually get a certain amount of subscribers, then I start getting sponsorships. So like uh this is one guy, he was like he's known for doing porn, and there's this uh Lou company called Sprunk Spunk or something like that. They gave him a sponsorship deal. So now every time so he will sit literally sit and do like live TikToks all day and have like the Sprunk lube in the background, and that's his part of his agreement for the sponsorship. They so people ask him like, Oh, what's your favorite kind of lube? Oh, these then he pull up the he pulled up the bottle, like they make careers off of being porn stars. They get like regular sponsorship deals Listen, like athletes do. I feel like, okay, so this is just me. Like, I feel like I I don't know, maybe because I have children, you okay. know. Okay, so that's a, and then I got boys on top of that. Okay. So I really just feel like if I would have decided to do something like that, I would. It probably would have been a. It probably would have been a short stint, and it would have been a long time until I have kids, right? And it's like I wouldn't want to be one of those well-known, like Pinky, you know, stars, mm-hmm. um, Cherokee to ass. Who else? Um, it's a lot of. It's a lot but of to Jada, be honest, fire. Jada but fires. to be honest, well, a lot of these kids, well, as soon as they turn 18, they create an OnlyFans account, and that's how they're making their money now. And I understand that, but so as far as body count wise, I'm not going to be with you if you used to be a porn star. It just, it's not for me. I'm not going to consider a serious relationship with somebody <laughs> that was in the sex industry. Not for me. It's not for me. And it it has and that's nothing why to do a lot with of people a lot of people in the sex industry, like once they either when they're in the industry or once they leave the sex industry, they always end up with they always end up being in a relationship with somebody that was yeah, in the sex in the industry. industry. And yeah. then and then um but there are some 
who are so there are some uh some some of them who work for like porn studios and they would shoot like gay lesbian straight porn and they would have a whole husband at home like the husband knows that they're a porn star their husband or wives are not porn stars but they they know that their their spouse is going to go do that so there are, so there are some people who are okay with it with their spouse there are being a porn star okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yep, not for me though. Nope. Nope. I'm good on that. And it's not even because I think it's nasty because they have to get tested and all of this on a regular basis, right? Mm-hmm. So they're clean. But it's just to me, it's a mentality because it's like, how do you go from having such a high body count to saying, okay, I'm going to love you forever and just you? I feel like that's a very hard transition because it's mostly acting. So no, it's not mostly acting. Acting is with your clothes on the acting in (laughs) pornos sucks. Okay. So my thing is, how is it that you are so aroused? You get what I'm saying? So uh, so some of them will, some of them. So there are a lot of straight men who actually do not date men, do not like men whatsoever. And it's a lot of straight men who are married to women, but would do gay porn because one, it pays more money. And if the, if you do it to do it unprotected, it pays more money. And they and then at the end of the day, they go home to their wives and live a whole normal life. Like they just wasn't out having listening at a porn so they having sex with a man. So tell me how is it possible that you're telling me that this man is straight and he just did gay porn? And then <laughs> he's not, he's not attracted because how are you going to get an erection without being attracted to something to be honest you know because you know i'll be doing my i'll be doing my research and all this so that's how i found out about dan benson so i've noticed like a lot of these a lot of the porn stars who are straight and then and i went back and actually watched their scenes they have a hard time maintaining a an erection, erection. i bet so so there's a lot of times where you see them do going pounding and going to town, but it's it's soft. So and then that's why you see a lot of them using either using performance enhancers when they have to do that stuff, or they try to use like the cock rings. They try different tricks. Um, um, what's his name? It's Hatler something on uh, uh, Hatler. I don't know. But uh, it's like him or somebody else. They were on TikTok and they were saying like they would have uh. If it's, so if it's a straight man doing a gay porn scene, they will have like straight porn playing in the background where he can watch a woman or whatever to try to maintain a, a erection. But that's too yeah. much. That's, Dude, too, like, some that's like, too many. Like gimmicks some of these and tricks. <laughs> that is too many gimmicks and tricks. If I'm not if I'm not attracted to you, it's, it's a no go. It is a no go. I can't, and I'm not, and I won't. And that's the whole reason why you would never see me in that industry because a lot of people just are not mentally attracted to me. Like you can be physically attractive, but then when you get to talking or your mannerisms or your personality, it's a no go. I don't want you to touch me. It's I can't. So that's something I can't do for money. I just we talked about that earlier. I'll be a horrible prostitute because I would make no money. In that industry, the more kinkier things are, the more it will pay out. So, like, there are some people who make five or ten thousand dollars a scene. So, yeah. So, to me, kink is different from just sex, right? Kink is something. I mean, different. yeah. That, so that includes like they, this includes fisting, double penetration. Um, like having certain things like big objects, like there are some people who will stick traffic cones up there, all kind of stuff. So, when being I think about, kink, on, I think on. about being tied down, harnesses, they have right, stuff like that, too. The swing, dungeon rooms, um, yeah. So, what, what being is that? Dominated like BD, BDSM, right? Mm-hmm. So, so, stuff like that, just. When I think so, to me, kink is something different. Okay, so kink is something different, but just full blown, you having a whole orgy ran on you, and it's nothing but some lube being passed around. You ain't. Oh no, I, I, 
I told you about uh, one of the. See, I meet I meet a lot of strange people on TikTok. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's this one person on TikTok. I'm not going to say his name, but he was telling me like, cause he uh, does porn, and he was telling me that you know, in one in, in the span of three days, he slept with over a hundred guys. And you know me, me being curious, I get to ask some questions like one, why, and two, how did you do that? And three, wow. your assholes should be hurting by it. Like, come on now. Yeah. Um. So drugs. he tell me like, yeah, I, he did drugs because the drugs. So they like they got like poppers, and then if the poppers is don't don't work, then they ask you to take like actual drugs like X or whatever, and it basically numbs them where they don't feel it, and yeah. it just basically yeah. having these trains ran on them. Yeah, and I'm just like, wow. So I had I saw I asked some afterwards like, hey, did you have pain afterwards or whatever, whatever. It, I guess once the drugs wore off, you are in a lot of pain. Why do you think ecstasy is such a popular drug? There you go. You can go and go and go and go like the Energizer Bunny. And it you feel nothing but pleasure. Where else, if you wasn't taking it, it would be painful for you, or you wouldn't be attracted, or you would you know, you wouldn't be interested in mm -hmm. something like that. So that's what I just, you know, I'm not passing judgment on anybody who decides to do that with their do that with their life. That's on them. I'm just saying that it's just it's just not for me because I feel like what I got in my head is how I want my life to go. It's just a complication. Now it's a difference when you want to do all that stuff between me and you in the bedroom right just let y'all know it's a podcast out there i can't remember the name of it but it's a podcast out there it goes into great detail about stuff a lot of this stuff when it comes to the porn industry and a lot so, of these people who are on this podcast he interviewed a lot of porn stars so i've, I've listened to it too so that's all i got some of my information too but yeah so i'm all for it if it's between me and you because i love you right to me that's what makes it more intense Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're just a stranger off the street, I'm going to get bored halfway through. I'm going to go to sleep. Especially if I've been drinking, I'm going to sleep on you because I'm number one, <laughs> I'm not entertaining. You don't know me. You don't know what I like. You know what I'm saying? So those are the things that matter to me. So that's why I said I would never be a good fit for the porn industry. Just not for me, but with somebody that I know and I have feelings for and things like that. If we want to try and experiment and do different things in between us, yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I'm not approved, never have been. But that aspect of it, just not knowing these people, strangers, like I is not, I'm not gonna be relaxed. And for a <laughs> woman, that is one big thing for performance, right? Being able to be relaxed because Number one, everything gonna be constricted and tight. Number two, everything gonna be dry. I don't care how much lube you are gonna have to con continually squirt, 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 squirt lube in there. If she's not into you, her body is not gonna react the, the right way. I don't care how much you do this, you do that, you do this. It's just not mm -hmm. her mind is gonna be somewhere else. So to all you guys out there. The key to getting your woman is always the mind thing first, fellas. If she, if you guys are having great, tremendous, stupendous sex, it's a mind thing. It has nothing to do with the way you look. It's a mind thing, right? So, I don't know. 35 bodies for a 31 year old, I feel like it's not a high body count in my head for somebody that is as attractive as her, that she's a high value female. So 35 bodies to me is not a lot. It's not, it's not at all. And that's if she was telling the truth. Right. Okay. Ugh. That's all well, I this got. Is, this is a part of the show where we got to wrap things up. Uh, literally wrap it up. Don't forget to head over to HabitsNewYork.com and use code active for receive twenty percent off your purchase. And don't forget to head over to WrestleMarts.com and use code Martel one receive five to ten percent off your purchase. And follow our social media accounts. 
Y'all know where to find me. <laughs> and until next time, this has been Same Character for Day Podcast. We have, I believe, two or three more episodes up for this season. So make sure y'all will see y'all next week on the next episode. Ta-da!